Before Sheikh Jara became the chairman of Microsoft Africa, he had spent a decade at NASA. Microsoft took him out of retirement on his farm in Mali to head their Africa operations. Tell me a little bit about how it happened that you ended up at NASA and this must have been the job of your dreams. Well, the thing is that uh, it happened in a very bizarre way. You know, imagine one day I am teaching a class at Howard University, a uh, space mechanic class, and I get out of the class to try to go uh, into the cafeteria, and I bump into uh, a gentleman who is on a campus to recruit for NASA. And he actually uh, mistook me for a student. Uh, and assumed that I was a graduate student and asked me if I would give him some time to interview me. I said, sure. You know, so after we talked for about 15 minutes, uh, you know, I turned around and started asking him questions about different projects that had been going on. And uh, because I've been uh, interested in what NASA does since uh, the time I was in uh, secondary school, uh, when in 1969, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. Ever since then, I've been very passionate about but, you know, just from a distance. Jara, who has a PhD in mechanical and aerospace engineering, was invited for a formal interview. And in July 1988, the Malian reported for duty at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. And uh, indeed, you know, uh, several months later, you know, we were launching uh, the Magellan probe to Venus, which was a very successful mission that went and mapped the whole planet of Venus in, uh, in three dimensions, uh, which is, was a challenge because it was never done before. Uh, Venus is covered with this thick cloud. Uh, you cannot, cameras cannot uh, see the surface. So for us to build a radar system that actually will, from above, help us do the three-dimensional mapping. That was my first mission, and it was uh, my, how you call it again, my onboarding in the NASA uh, family. It was a very, very difficult, but uh, very uh, challenging, but very, very interesting and thrilling experience. You were, of course, involved in several key missions when you were at NASA. I mean, you, you spoke about the Magellan, yeah. uh, Galileo, uh, Mars, <laughs> Pathfinder, all of those. Yes. Well, when you look back at your time there, what are you most proud of? Which projects are you most proud of? The project I'm most proud of is probably the last one I did there, which is the Mars Pathfinder. Uh, and this for uh, several reasons. First of all, in the past, NASA used to do big missions that will cost billions of dollars that will take seven, eight years to build the spacecraft, and then a further 10 years to collect the data, you know, which means that a scientist could actually uh, graduate from school, start their career, and work on the same mission until they retire. You know? And then we have this new administration, administrator for NASA who came from the private sector, and he came with a whole new different philosophy. In fact, he told us, from now on, we are going to do every mission at NASA faster, better, and cheaper. Faster, better, and cheaper. You know, everybody starts saying, is this guy real? And he was very, very real. And we realized very quickly that that was the way to go. The Pathfinder landed on Mars in 1997, proving that faster, better, cheaper was doable. For Giara, this was a project that reconnected him to the country of his birth. Uh, about six months later, uh, the young people in my country, in Mali, through the U.S. ambassador, invited me to come and do lectures about the mission. And when I did that lecture, that thing was so successful. And the fact that uh, the, the media broadcast that, uh, the, the landing of that mission with my face as a member of that team has given so much hope to young people all around the continent. I used to receive over 1,000 emails a day. You know? So when I went and did this first lecture in my country, the ambassador of the time wrote a report to State Department saying you know, the, the impact it has on people. 
Uh, and because of that, NASA say, hey, you know, really, uh, instead of uh, doing what you do just on a regular basis, why don't you use half of the time and we will put a budget into place for you to travel across Africa and talk to young people, uh, work on uh, doing conferences for young people, answering their questions, telling them about the different mission you've been working on, and, uh, you know, encourage them to learn science, to master science. Coming up... The same way my mother used to tell people, don't frighten him. I am not frightened, I am not overwhelmed by looking at any challenge. And there are many challenges ahead as Apple overtakes Microsoft to become the world's number one technology company.